Welcome back to Empowered. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky. Today's episode, we're dealing with memory loss, dementia, and Alzheimer's with art and music. Now, before we went to break, you were talking about focus and memory, Vana. I think that what I was trying to um, say, if I remember, uh, was basically <laughs> <laughs> was basically that uh, what we base our theory on that pe- that even though you're getting forgetful, uh, the creative part of your brain stays creative. And therefore things like music, dance, uh, theater, painting um, become very important because there are things that you can enjoy more uh, as you age. um, And and you don't have to worry about things like memory and crosswords puzzles and things that people think they need to be doing. Yeah, I I know so many people focus on those crossword puzzles or just doing physical puzzles as well. And it just makes them feel, it just makes you feel worse. (laughs) Oh, geez. (laughs) We don't focus on what what you're losing. We focus on what you have to give, you know? So what are the key underlying principles then? Uh, I guess our... Our um, our key underlining principles are connection, right? We spend a lot of time getting to know our individuals and relational care, which is also connection. Um, we have in the past worked with different organizations like uh, University Health Network, Sunnybrook Hospital, School of Nursing at York University, Glenglow School of Music at uh, the Royal Academy of Music. And all of these things help to enhance um, a a person's memory, or at least it makes them feel very good about what they're doing at that point in time. So how does the BTOF method address individual learning differences? Because we're all so different and we're all going through different things at different times. Well, one of the things that we do is we have a high ratio of artists to participants. And, um, and so, um, so our, our folks and participants in our program get a lot of attention. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the best way I can think of we do that. Yeah. And, and, you know, you're talking about artists and I know that there's dance class and there's singing. Um, could you share with us examples of some of the classes? Sure. Like we will probably, we will, I, I mean, in an, in a maybe art class, uh, we will do a conversation about an artist like Frida Kahlo. And then we will talk about her style of painting, what differentiated her from different artists. And then our our, uh, students will go and be able to paint, but we will like give them like a face with just one eyebrow across it, which is we're making, you know, taking fun in the Frida Kahlo thing. And and then they paint faces and, um, and express themselves, we play Spanish music, we, you know, would make them feel like very related to the work that they're doing. So it's and very it's involved then. It's very like they, they're actually painting and they're learning. Um, what about the dance classes? I, I was fascinated to hear about that. <laughs> Our, well, we usually have a music class or we'll talk about a genre of music. And when we do that, like let's, for example, take swing. We'll talk about swing. We'll talk about the artists that develop swing. We'll talk about different songs uh, that were swing based. Uh, we'll we'll then um, you know at some point after singing some of those songs, people want to get up and dance. Um, you know, it might it's not necessarily the smoothest, but it's a lot of fun. Of course, it is because there's movement, right? And it yeah, it brings back some sort of a, a memory or some sort of a uh, an experience that they'd been through before. That's exactly it. You know, we want, we, it's all about, I know it seems like it's all about feeling good in the moment, but really that, that really seems to carry through. I can't say that participants go home and then, you know, they're, they're starting to remember your things, but what we find is emotionally, that's where it's affected deeply and emotionally they start to feel better about themselves. You know, and I think that's all we want. When, when people start aging, a lot of times, you know, your body goes, your memory goes, there's so many things that go, and then their depression sets in. And it's very difficult for people to kind of get out of that because, you know, 
others expect them to just sit there and, and, and not participate in anything. And it's so nice to hear that when people go home, there's that euphoric feeling and it makes them feel alive again. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the BTOF method and fostering collaboration.